Lesson 59, experimental data, simultaneous equations with fractions and decimals, and rectangular forms of polar form. We're going to talk about experimental data in class, so you can leave a section of notes for that. We're going to talk about simultaneous equations with fractions and decimals first. This is when we've got um, two equations with two unknowns that we would solve by substitution or elimination, but instead of having whole numbers or integers, as our coefficients, we have fractions and decimals as coefficients. So what we need to do is change both equations so that they're inner so that there are integers which are positive and, and negative whole numbers instead of fractions or decimals. Alright, so let's look at an example. The first example would be x over 2 plus 3y over 5 equals negative 2 fifths and 0.06x minus 0.2y equals 1.04. Right, so what we want to do is, first of all, in the top equation, we want to get rid of the fraction. Well, when we, when we have equations um, where we have fractional terms, we can multiply each term through by a common denominator, and that will allow us to cross-cancel and get rid of our fraction. So, in this equation, I want to look for a common denominator between 2 and 5. Well, we know that that would be 10. So, I'm going to multiply every term through by 10. Now I can cross cancel to get rid of my denominator. So 2 cross cancels with 10 to give me 5. 5 cross cancels with 10 to give me 2. And same with the last term. So when I put those terms back in, my new equation is 5x plus 6y equals negative 4. Now I have all integers instead of fractions. Now in my second equation, in order to get rid of the decimals, we can multiply through by a common power of 10. or you guys simply know it is just moving the decimals. This term has two decimal places, this has one, and this has two. So if I move each decimal two places to the right, I will have been able to get rid of all of my decimals. If I move 0 0.06 two places to the right, I get 6x. If I move this decimal here and this middle term two places to the right, I end up with minus 20y. And if I move this decimal two places to the right, I get equals 104. Now I have two equations where I have whole numbers instead of fractions and decimals, and I can solve either by substitution or elimination. All right, so what I want you to do is go ahead and finish solving for this one. So hit pause when you solve, hit play for a solution, um, and then go on to the next example. All right, when I solved using, um, I used elimination. I eliminated the x term by multiplying the top by negative six and the bottom by five. I was able to solve an x is 4 and y is equal to negative 4. All right, what I want you to do is this next example. Do it on your own and we will check it um, when we come to class. We have x over 3 plus 2y over 7 equals negative 3 sevenths. That's the first equation. And then I have 0 0.01x minus 0.6y equals 3.03. .03. Go ahead and hit pause and solve that um, and hit play when you um, have completed the problem. We'll check it in class tomorrow. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is converting from rectangular form to polar form. Now we talked about rectangular form and polar form a few lessons back in lesson 54. We've got, we went from polar to rectangular. Now we're going to go from rectangular to polar. There are four steps that we're going to use to do this. Step one is the same as before. We want to draw a diagram. We're going to draw a diagram and make sure that we label all the parts. Alright, 
Step two, we want to find the length of the hypotenuse of our triangle or the vector. We're going to determine the length of the vector. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to do this. determine the measure of our um, angle, okay? And by using the tangent function, we can determine the measure of our angle because we're already given the opposite and the adjacent side in rectangular form. So if you want to put right next to there, we're going to use the tangent function. All right, and step four, once we've determined the angle of the triangle, we need to measure the angle from the positive x-axis. We will show you what this looks like in just a second. So we're going to measure it from the positive x-axis. All right, so let's do an example of this. We are going to convert negative 5r minus 3u to polar form. Okay, that's where we have a vector with an angle. All right, so we're going to convert these. The first thing that we need to do is measure, um, or excuse me, is to draw our diagram. All right, so we're still going to draw a diagram with an x, y axis, but instead of labeling the vector and our angle, we're going to label our side. Now we have negative 5r, negative 3u. Remember that the r is like the x axis, it's right to left, and the u is like the y axis, it's up and down. So we're actually finding negative 5 negative 3. All right, so our point is going to be right there. Okay, we have a negative 5 and we have a negative 3. All right, so what we're going to do is since negative 5, 3 is here, we're going to connect that from our middle and that's going to be our vector. Okay, again, I'm going to connect this to my x-axis and show that this side is 3. All right, so what I'm going to do in order to find the missing side of this right triangle is to use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the length of our vector. This is step two. So if our Pythagorean theorem states a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and our vector is c squared, then I can just plug in 5 and 3 into a and b. 5 squared is 25. 3 squared is 9. 25 plus 9 is 34, which means that the square root of 34 is going to be c. So my vector length now is the square root of 34. Now I'm going to use step 3 to determine the measure of the angle. So I want to find this, this angle using the tangent function. And remember, tangent is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, or excuse me, over the adjacent, it's opposite over adjacent. Well, the opposite side for my angle is 3, and the adjacent side is 5. And remember, when we're finding the angle, we're always doing inverse tangent. So we're doing inverse tangent of 3 over 5. And if we plug this into our calculator, it's going to be 31 degrees. All right, so my angle here is 31 degrees. All right, but that is not going to be the measure of our polar angle over here. Remember that when we measure angles, they always come from the positive x-axis. So my angle starts here. And it actually goes all the way through over to my vector. All right, so from here to here, we know it's 90 degrees. We go more, it's 180 degrees. I'm going 31 degrees past that 180. So what I'm going to do to find the angle measure is just add 180 plus my 31, and that will give me my polar angle, not just the angle inside my triangle. All right, so if we add 180 plus 31, we get 211. So my angle is 211 degrees. And that is the final answer. All right, I know we only did one example, but I'm going to give you one more. Um, and I want you to try to do this by yourself using this, these steps. All right, so in your notes tonight, I want you to find the polar coordinate for negative 3r minus 5u. Okay? Go ahead and finish that, and we will check it in class.